you're going to be shocked. Should the Magnificent Seven really be the Fab Five? Let's see in this week's session of Trade Your Way to Freedom. Now let's look at the indexes and see what's going on with them. And here's the S&P, the spiders. As we look, we see a uptrending line taken off here. However, it's working inside a uptrending channel. On the weekly chart and daily chart, it has basically broken out from that. At the same time, our momentum indicators that we see here are showing some negative divergence here. And not quite here. It's still breaking out to a new high. That's positive. And uh, at the same time, on the market forecast, hot negative divergence. And while that doesn't immediately lead to a, in the markets, it can have an effect of basically piling on uh, so that over time, that can be the inertia that pulls the market down. At this particular point, I am not looking to short the market. We don't have enough information about that. Am I leery about the market? Not really, because there has been times in the past, like back in 2004, when the S&P went on a tear and just it would pull back three or four days and five days and then break out. Pull back three or four or five days, then break out. And it would move higher and higher. And that was a super trend that the indexes were on. So on the spiders, what am I looking at? Just continue to ride the wave heading up, wait for the pullbacks. And as long as, especially if you are a trader who watches the uh, market forecast on the weekly chart, as long as the market forecast stays above this 80 line right here, continue to trade the pullbacks to the upside. So that's one. <clears throat> the next one I want to focus on is the Russell. The good side about the Russell is it is holding above the 50-day moving average. Nice hammer on day before yesterday. So do we want to get long the, um, let me activate that and stretch that on up, back up to there. There we go. Because that's what it has to break out. That's the defined downtrend. So the 50-day moving average is a strong level of support. Will it hold there and continue to push its way higher? Again, the small caps are so interdependent upon a reduction in rate by the Fed that it may just continue to drive sideways. We'll see, we'll wait and see what happens with that. As on the, these are very important aspects as we see over here, the TSI on the weekly chart is still facing down. So let's be patient until we get a reversal. The TSI on the daily charts also reversed off a level of resistance and is dropping back down. Could we stop right here and rally back up? Sure could. I would be interested in IWM down here towards the midsection of the candlestick, the hammer candlestick, because that was a hammer and a, a bullish harami right in there, which is a nice strong reversal signal. So what's the number on? If I get back down to about 192, 193, that would be an opportunity. What am I looking at on TNA? Because that's what I would actually be trading. Similar type situation. If I get back down to about 3430, that may be a trigger to go ahead and get onto a trade if that level holds. We're really close to that's where your stop out would be. And so the risk on that is actually quite small. I will give you the review of the Magnificent Seven Stocks, and we will do it in two minutes or less. NVDA, where is it of interest to me? It is so far extended, I would not even look at NVDA until it gets a pullback back to in between the 8- and the 20-day moving average, which for NVDA is right in this area here. There was a small breakout about 6.04. Put an alert about 610. And if it gets back to 610, then I would be checking it out. So that's one of the ways you can do these alerts is put your alert in, let it trigger, send you an email, then you go see if you have a reversal signal. Next, Meta. Can you believe how Meta did today? This is huge. On Meta, identify this gap right here. There's the bottom of the gap there. Here's the top of the gap. 
oftentimes a pullback into the midsection here, the 50% mark would give an idea where you could want to get into Meta. I would put an alert at the low of the body of Meta today. If it gets down to there or even dropping the midsection of today's candle, that's where I'd put the alert to then go and look in Meta to say, hey, am I ready to buy? Amazon. Amazon is a slow and steady climber. We actually were in Amazon. We took, we did not have 10% going into earnings. And my rules are, if we don't have 10% going into earnings, I exit. Nice gap up again. Same thing. Lows at 167. Put an alert down at about, I'd say 169. And then another alert at approximately 165. It pulls back to that may give you an opportunity to get into Amazon. I should have saved this one for last, but this is looking really nice. Earnings are behind us on Google or, uh, or Alphabet. We're getting a bounce off the uh, trend line. I'll be looking at potentially any type of a little pullback to retest here. It may just break on up from where it's at right now to the highs today. So it's moved about 3% or so. And so I'll be looking to try to pick this up somewhere between the 50 and the uptrend line. Microsoft, another one. These are the Power Five or the Fab Five is what they're trying to call them right now. I don't know if that's good or bad. Uh, not really a great setup after earnings. However, it has broken out. And I would look at a pullback back in between the 8 and the 20. That Those were the good. Now we get to the ugly. Maybe this was ugly when I was looking at it earlier today. However, Apple, this is a nice one-day reversal off of a level of support. So Apple may be in play towards the middle third of today's huge candle. Right now, we have a piercing line, which is a bullish reversal signal. And the uh, distance here, it's got about 4.3%. And so Apple is a lot like Amazon in that it's a slow and steady mover. It's you know certainly not going to be one of those 5, 10, or 10, 15 plus percent moves. And last but not least, our good old buddy, Tesla. Tesla has come down to the lower level of this downtrending channel. It is putting in a, a bottom. However, I think if we break out of this 180 level on Tesla and the lower portion of the channel, watch out, 152. 37, next target down, breaks that. 118 is the top of the support. 101 is the bottom of the support. Tesla keeps getting the crummy moves that it's getting. I'll be looking to buy if it gets down here, but make Tesla show us that it's ready to reverse. And right now it's not showing us that. Anil, that I think I took over two minutes, but it was pretty darn close. Yeah, that was good. Thank you for the review. Yeah, last but not least, Neil and I talk a little bit about a really great subject. Cues. The NASDAQ has come down, hit the 20-day moving average, and rebound very nicely. Is it how high is it going to go from here? We don't know. At the same time, what are some of the, the characteristics of this particular uptrend now? One. Negative divergence on the TSI as we're going up what appears to be starting to make new highs. Negative divergence on the weeklies over here. Negative divergence on the other um, momentum indicator. If you look at the RSI, you will probably also notice negative divergence on the Qs. So what does that mean? Does that mean it, we're going to just fall out of the sky? No, it doesn't. We have to see a pattern a candlestick reversal pattern or something like that. And it has to show that it's stalling out. And then do we trade the first move down? Probably not. We are going to be talking about how to determine when we are, have a top that we can trade on this month's uh, premium training session, because I think it's very important to know how to wait and be patient for the trades in the proper direction. And so that's what we'll be working on uh, this month. Neil, that's what I've got with the uh, indexes. I like the Qs or TQQ, but right now, after, maybe after a breakout, 
or you could trade it directly off a pullback off the 20 day moving average. That's what I'd be looking at. What's your thoughts? Right now on indices, the my triple screen system, the signals came in November and they're still intact, except of course in IWM. Okay. Gave up for a while, but it's back on the uptrend beginning 26 signal. Mm -hmm. So we will see how it goes. But overall, generally, it's looking very good. Okay. Does, do, does the Russell just looking absolutely ugly and not on the daily chart and weekly chart showing that it's, in other words, what I'm trying to ask is it look like it's leaning towards getting a triple screen signal back up to the upside? Actually, it, the daily signal just came back, but I don't know how, how long it's going to hold. It, it okay. came 29th and now it has pulled back, but looks good. Okay. It's, yeah. And I'm going to be continuing to, to watch that. The other thing that I'll be covering this month is also the secrets of how to let your winners run, specifically tying into the weekly chart. Because I know there's a lot of folks who would like to break off part of their the funds in their portfolio so that they could let that piece grow separately than the active or the shorter term swing trading. And we're going to show how to evaluate the charts so that you can get on one of those runners that will run 50, 60, 70, 100 plus percent without getting uh, shaken out of it. So that's going to be a lot of fun. A weekly triple screen signal does an excellent job to answer that question. The mind weekly and daily, it's uh, real good information. Yeah, those weekly signals are very powerful. And I think one of the reasons a lot of folks don't focus on them as much as they potentially should is it takes a lot of patience to wait for a uh, wait five days for a new signal or wait sometimes three and four weeks but the secret in waiting is that they usually lead to more powerful moves and longer and bigger moves and so if you want to put money in your pocket that's a great thing to be waiting for here we're sitting as of about nine o'clock this morning as you see really nice rebound after the couple day pullback and i'm really pleased uh currently we're up about almost seven percent and we're beating all the indexes uh, for sure and if you're interested in finding out what the heck we're doing with autopilot trading i will put a link in the uh, description on how you can become an autopilot trader so hey just a reminder the keys to success in the market is to have a plan and stick to it one of the ways i established my plan was we wrote this book called trade your way to freedom it's a bestseller over on amazon i will put a link down in the description on how you can get hold of this book uh, those who have bought it i want to thank you so much the reports and come back on the book have been phenomenal Hey guys, if you did find value today, please tell your friends. I got several emails with people who said, hey, I'm sharing your stuff with other people and they're really enjoying it. So I appreciate the heck out of that. If you found today's session valuable and it will revolutionize your trading, join our community. Hit the subscribe button and share it with other traders. Remember, you are in control of your trading journey and we're here to provide you some guidance along the way. So trade smart, stay focused, and make 2024 your year of trading triumph. I just want to let you know that all the materials we do present are for training purposes. Traders should always paper trade any new method prior to the risk of their own personal capital. Past performance is not an indication or promise of future performance.